welcome. This session will be covering the basics related to disasters, disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. We will cover important aspects of these three topics by asking the following questions. What is a disaster and how does a hazard event become a disaster? What is disaster risk reduction? What are the main actions undertaken to reduce disaster risks? Why are we offering this class and why do we think it is so important? Thanks to improvements in early warning and rescue, the number of people killed globally in disasters is declining. However, economic damages from disasters continue to increase, often severely impacting development in the poorest countries. And the fact is that most disasters are actually preventable or could at least be considerably reduced. As students, practitioners and decision makers in this field, we need to know how disasters of various types may be preventable and what actions we need to undertake to reduce the impacts of such disasters. So let us come to the first question. What is a disaster and how does a hazard event become a disaster? Hazard events like landslides, cyclones or avalanches are what cause disasters. Whether a hazard leads to a disaster depends largely on the magnitude of the event, but also on the exposure of people, how well a society is prepared to cope with such an event, and how well healthy ecosystems can mitigate the impacts. But not all hazards become disasters. For example, annual flooding and floodplains of Bangladesh may not cause damage to humans and would therefore not be considered a disaster. But the same amount of water in a country not used to frequent flooding may become a disaster. So hazards become disasters when they overwhelm a society's ability to cope. Disasters can be classified in different ways. The first distinction is between man-made disasters linked to technological hazards, such as chemical accidents or oil spills, versus disasters that are linked to natural hazards, such as storms or flooding. This course deals exclusively with disasters caused by natural hazards. Please be aware that we are very cautious in not referring to the term natural disasters, as many natural hazards are caused or at least accelerated by human activity, which means the disasters are not natural in the strict sense of the term. Let's look at this example from a town in eastern Nepal. Between 2004 and 2009, over 200 households settled in the riverbank, in shanty houses looking like this. Now the media often point to climate change as a driving factor leading to disasters. But do you think that if there is a heavy flood here, this is due to climate change? Obviously not. Most of these people moved to this place from the mountain areas where they were affected by landslides, diseases or were drawn to the city for reasons like better employment opportunities. Well, as you can imagine, this neighborhood is prone to flooding. Monsoon rainfalls and regular flooding over the river have always been here. But now that people live in the floodplain, normal flooding can easily become a disaster as people are exposed. Now let us go to the second question. What is disaster risk reduction? These two images help explain what we mean by risk or disaster risk, which means the potential losses due to disasters. Risk is commonly referred to as the product of three main factors and it is important to understand the difference between them. Using our example, the flood is a hazard. Exposure is the number of houses or people and the amount of time they spend in that flood prone area. And vulnerability is usually the characteristics of a community, family or an asset and its susceptibility to a flood, for example. The formula shows that risk results from all these three factors and by reducing only one of them, the risk will already be less. We will be going into much more detail on terminology in the expert track, but for now, just know that we are using the terminology established by the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction or UNISDR. Now that you have the basics down, let's go further. So what are the main actions undertaken to reduce disaster risk? Well, going back to Nepal, you would think that the easiest way to reduce risk is to reduce the number of people living in the floodplain. Sure. However, relocation of people is easier said than done. 
Most people do not want to move away, especially after many of them already came from places where they were facing even greater risks. Others do not have the financial means to settle elsewhere. In reality, to reduce flooding, the options are either. Structural measures, for example, building flood dikes, putting up sandbags or trying to work with communities upstream to ensure that the watershed is forested. Water retention basins can also reduce the amount of water flow in the way. Or you can consider non-structural measures. For example, establishing an early warning system, evacuation drills or engaging with the municipality to ensure they have an urban plan to find alternative places for these people to live. If you were responsible for reducing risk at this town in Nepal and had a limited budget, it is definitely difficult to decide in what type of measures to invest. Now, before you move on, challenge yourself in the next quiz and see what you find to be the most appropriate measures to reduce disaster risk.